G'day, I'm Dan. I'm a pretty average uh, astrophotographer from Queensland. And in today's video, I've got a few things to unbox. Shout out to First Light Optics. And what we're going to look at first is the Skywatcher Evo Lux uh, 82ED. The uh, reason I'm doing an unboxing and a review on this is uh, I've only been able to find a couple um, online. Uh, it seems to be a relatively um, uh, new scope. And I'm really interested to see how it uh, performs visually and um, uh, through astrophotography, which will probably be uh, through my modified uh, Canon 1200D DSLR. Uh, so this is it. Um, I've never owned a new scope before, so I'm pretty excited. Um, the case uh, itself uh, is a, a standard kind of looking uh, Skywatcher uh, case, which you'll probably be uh, familiar with. There's a little pre-cut foam uh, inserts for an eyepiece and some other odds and ends, which uh, will come in handy. Um, and that's pretty much it, the scope itself is all assembled there's nothing uh really to do it's quite a tight fit um i've noticed but it's obviously not gonna uh move around the quality uh seems really really good especially coming uh from the skywatch uh, evo star adad uh, just the focus locking uh knobs just really thick um the other screws in general uh seem really nice uh not that i had any real issues with the Evo Star focus? So the only real issue I had if it was if there was too much equipment uh, on the focuser that I might not be able to wind it back up. But I never really had it uh, sliding around. But this feels a lot more uh, heavy duty, and I really like that it's got a retractable dew shield as well. Uh, that's something that the Evo Star was missing. Um, that goes out uh, quite a long way as well. Yep. So you've got. The, uh, the two finder shoes um, and I've also um, uh, got with me as well the optional uh, green uh, handle bracket so obviously fit the 50 uh, ED guide scope um, most likely the, the ASI uh, Air. So first impressions are I really really like uh, the scope I really like all the little improvements uh, on the Evo Star uh, AD ED Really dig the colour scheme, uh, it's going to go really well with the uh, HEQ5 uh, behind me. I got so much out of the uh, EVOSAR ADED, um, both visually uh, through planets, I thought it's, I was still able to get a really good result. And deep space uh, photography, I got some really, really good shots um, with the EVOSAR. Been you know, uh, ED doublet, um, this being it's meant to have some improved glass, uh, which I guess the performance is going to be similar or the same. Um, I realise that it's, I guess it's a similar kind of uh, package. There were a lot of um, different options um, that I could have gone, but by the time I sold um, my EvoStar ADED, um, the upgrade to this uh, wasn't really um, too costly. Being a faster scope, uh, F6.4, um, I think I'm just going to get a little bit more uh, versatility uh, with it. And because I've also ordered the Starazona Apex ED uh, 0.65 reducer for this scope, it's also going to take it down to f4.2, uh, which is going to turn it into you know, a really fast scope 
uh, compared to, to what I was using. So I purchased this from First Light Optics. They were really, really helpful. Uh, it ended up being uh, around uh, $950 Australian delivered for the scope and uh, the optional handle, which I thought was a really good price. Uh, Skywatcher uh, recommended retail price uh, at the moment on their website is uh, $1,600 Australian. Uh, isn't too realistic. Um, most stores are around the $1,200 to uh, $1,300 mark for it. So I thought that this was a pretty good price. I went through First Light Optics because uh, I was ordering uh, some other things that either weren't um, in Australia um, or Australian stores weren't stocking at the time and their help in general, um, their competitive pricing um, and three days delivered uh, via DHL uh, I thought was really good. A hot tip for young players, if you are thinking of importing anything uh, into Australia, it doesn't have to be a telescope, just make sure that the total uh, value um, is under a thousand dollars Australian otherwise you'll get hit with uh, GST uh, on import uh, but I've received all my packages and had absolutely no issues with customs and yeah like I said three days uh, in my case was um, door to door service uh, which has been yeah which is excellent really it's better than uh, Australia Post. I've got to unbox the handle uh, not that interesting but I'll do it anyway uh, so I got this um, with the Evolux uh, ADED, same order, uh, worked out to be um, about $33 Australian, but with postage um, ended up being very similar um, to Australian prices, which is about $40. Uh, once I work out how to open a box, uh, so that's how it comes, comes with the screws and the Allen key. And so that will either sit in one of these orientations. Um, haven't decided. I'll see, probably see how it balances first. Um, but it obviously gives some more greeny goodness uh, to the setup. Uh, so this is the setup for tonight. Uh, the sky's looking relatively clear, so that'll be good. Um, so at the moment, I've got the Evo Guide 50 paired with the uh, Zewo 290MC uh, guide camera. Um, and I've got my modified uh, Canon 1200D uh, with an Astronomic uh, CLS filter uh, paired with the Evolux 82ED um, and I actually just did the uh, Rowan Belt Mod upgrade to the HEQ5 uh, last night so I'm interested uh, to see how that goes um, and uh, the diagonal uh, that I ordered as well turned up so I'm going to have a look at some uh, visual stuff. Uh, I haven't actually chosen a target uh, for tonight, uh, so I'll work that out uh, a bit later, uh, but this will be the initial test run. Uh, the only thing that I have noticed that the compression ring um, for the two inch diagonals and the T2 adapter is extremely tight. I'm not sure if it's just come tight from the, the factory, but I don't think it's normal. Um, I did try a smaller T2 uh, adapter but the compression ring as well um, seems to be a, an oval shape not circular um, but to actually get my cannon on or any sort of two inch diagonal or eyepiece I've had to unscrew the compression ring and really jiggle and force it on which obviously isn't ideal um, and at the moment um, I have to do that every single time to take off the uh, the camera or the diagonal um, but I have mis uh, messaged uh, First Light Optics um, uh, to see what they think um, and whether or not I can adjust it myself or, or whether it will be a replacement or something like that. And I've just been playing around with where I'm going to put um, things. I've moved one of the um, uh, finder brackets uh, just to the back here um, just so I don't have as many loose cords around. Uh, and I was going to put the Evo guide on this finder bracket with its other one, but I just ended up uh, putting on the handle for now, so it's uh, dead center. Not that it really matters, but I'm sure I'll be playing around with um, things and moving stuff around anyway. And at the moment, everything's really uh, well balanced, um, but I'll just adjust that just with the focus that I get. Uh, everything's, yeah, quite smooth, moving everything around, so that's good.
And for my visual uh, observation test, I've got the William Optics uh, two inch diagonal with the Beta Hyperion uh, Mark IV zoom lens. And it'll be interesting to see how it compares uh, to that bad boy. Uh, the Brezza 152mm uh, F5 um, uh, four element Acromet. Uh, there's one issue uh, with the guide scope like that. <laughs> I've had to offset the eyepiece slightly because it won't fit. And yeah, so from here I'm just going to wait uh, for the skies to get uh, dark, I guess. Uh, so, as usual, uh, first light didn't go uh, as expected. I only had a very short window before those clouds rolled over. And these uh, last few days have just been uh, the exact same, either cloudy or rain. Um, and I was trying to focus uh, everything. Guiding wasn't really playing the power cord uh, to the HEQ5. Um, I could see it was dodgy because the power light was flashing, so I had to switch that out. Um, didn't want to waste my time trying to calibrate the guiding. So I tried um, uh, some unguided uh, exposures, uh, even though the pole alignment uh, was good through uh, the ASI air, I was still getting um, uh, some star trailing at two minutes. I then ended up calibrating the, the guiding and I pretty much got one single uh, two minute uh, exposure. Um, and I haven't had time to do any calibration frames. I did get to test it visually uh, on Saturn. Uh, I'll show you a small video, uh, not really great. I was just recording on my phone over the eyepiece, um, but that was uh, with, ended up doing it with a two and a half uh, times Barlow and with the beta zoom uh, eyepiece zoomed in all the way. It wasn't fuzzy. Obviously a, a tiny bit dimmer, but I was still blown away. I could still see um, two or three of Saturn's moons. I was really happy with that. I'm not, uh, I don't know how in depth people get with visual stuff, but all right, it still blew me away. Astrophotography wise, um, I can't remember where I pointed um, uh, the, the camera for the two minute exposure um, because it saved it as field of view cross. So I can't remember really what I picked. Um, I probably could um, do the automatic uh, find a thing where it works out its position and, and stuff, but um, pretty much I'll just display uh, this two minute uh, uncalibrated uh, image. So no darks, no flats, no bias, just processed uh, in PixInsight. And you know, I'm still pretty impressed uh, uh, with that picture. Um, yeah, uh, so I guess this is a unboxing and first light initial review. Um, uh, and just that, the, the, the only issue I've got is just that uh, compression ring, but I'm going to have to play with it and try and adjust that actual copper copper ring to hopefully uh, make everything smoother when I'm changing out the uh, diagonal. Uh, and the camera. Uh, one last thing, I did uh, receive some more uh, packages. Um, so I've got in here is the Star Arizona 0.65 uh, reducer. And in here is the ASI uh, 533 MC Pro. Um, so I ended up selling the 294 uh, before I even got to, to test it out, um, just because um, I just think this is going to pair uh, better. And I'm still waiting for the Optolong uh, filter to arrive. Um, so I think I'll just do some more testing with my modified DSLR for now. Um, but yeah, thanks for. Uh, tuning in and, and everything. Uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to provide um, a more detailed, um, I guess, experience uh, and review uh, when the weather finally clears. Uh, but cheers. Well, I just finished uh, doing about a 10 minute review uh, after the unboxing and realized that I didn't press uh, play. So yep, rookie error. Starting again.
starting again. Uh, but at the moment, everything's everything's really well balanced, except for the scope.